Hi everyone and welcome to Going Over Wrestling with me your host Ross. In this episode I am joined by Jamie. Alright. We're going to be taking a look at In Your House from May the 14th 1995 which was Mother's Day. So some background leading into this show. Michaels was challenging Diesel for the heavyweight title but due to interference from Sid which backfired Diesel picked up the win. The next night on Raw Sid turned on Michaels by powerbombing him three times. Diesel was the one to come out to make the save. Sid later joined DiBiase's corporation. So Brett had been feuding with Lawler since King of the Ring time. Brett won an award from the WWF magazine in which Lawler accused Brett of being a racist, saying that votes from Japanese fans weren't included. This led Hakushi to challenge Brett to a match at In Your House. Upset at this, Brett challenged Lawler for a match after he had wrestled Hakushi on the same show. Doc Hendricks, aka Michael Hayes and Vince McMahon are on commentary for this show with backstage segments from Todd Pettengill and Stephanie Wyand. Throughout the show they're promoting a prize draw that they're having for a house that they're giving away to a lucky fan. Okay, so our first match of the night then is Bret Hart taking on Hakushi, who is accompanied to the ring by Sinja. Get cutaways to Lawler backstage, who's watching on intently. Yeah. Liking what he's seen when Hakushi's in control, I must say. We get a sort of miscommunication spot with Bret coming off the ropes. Hakushi's leaned forward. I don't know if he's supposed to be going for a back body drop or what, but Bret just stops in front of him. But he lands an elbow blow to the back of the neck to cover for it anyway. I would say this is probably the only blemish of the whole match. Hakushi nails a diving headbutt for a very near fall. He goes for a springboard splash but the hitman moves. Brett then goes to slap on the sharpshooter but Sinja runs distraction by getting up onto the apron. Brett chases him off. Hakushi looks to capitalise but gets atomic drop for his troubles. There's a massive lariat from the hitman which Hakushi sells with a backflip. Brett runs the ropes and Sinja trips him. Brett lands a suicide dive out the ring to Sinja and walks away with punches at him. This is quite a good spot. So back in the ring we get Brett delivering a suplex to Hakushi and both men go over the top rope and hit the outside. It was quite safe as well for this sort of a bump, it looked actually quite good. Usually they're going in the ring, so yep. that was quite nice. So with both men on the outside, Hakushi back in control hits an amazing looking Asai moonsault. Yeah, that was nice as well. So in the lead up to the finish, Brett is on the apron, Hakushi in the ring. He attempts to suplex Brett back into the ring, but Brett manages to wriggle off the back, go for a belly to back suplex, which Hakushi counters, gets behind for a belly to back of his own. Brett counters this into a wheelbarrow roll for the three count and picks up the win, and it was a great transition at the end. Yeah, good opening match. Very good opening match and when Brett is getting out of the ring he sells twisting his knee and begins to limp backstage. I wonder how this will play into the rest of the show. So we get the first of the many painful segments with Stephanie promoting the draw later on in the show. Double J cuts her off when his music hits. Okay so this is a match between Jeff Jarrett who is actually an Intercontinental Champion and The Roadie who is Road Dog versus Razor Ramon. This was initially supposed to be a tag team match but in the weeks leading up to In Your House The Roadie wrote him off with an injury angle. Before the match starts we have a telephone interview with McMahon speaking with the 123 kid. So we get a nice fall away slam from Razor Ramon on Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett is in control when he tags in the roadie for some cheap shots. As soon as Razor begins to mount a comeback he quickly tags back out to Jeff Jarrett. I love this sort of heel work here. Yeah. So Razor goes to hit the Razor's edge on Jeff Jarrett but Jeff counters into a back body drop over the top rope. We then get the roadie with another cheap shot hitting a diving clothesline from the second rope to Razor on the outside. Quite nice. Back in the ring though we get the roadie tagging in to hit a second rope knee drop to Razor Ramon for a near fall. That isn't the best looking knee drop is it? So Jeff goes for the figure four leg lock but Razor shakes him off. Razor then hits Razor's edge but as he's hoisting him up he sort of struggles midway but he manages to power through and get him up for the Razor's edge which is a crucifix power bomb and gets the one two three and the victory. Straight after this it just becomes a straight up two on one beat down. Aldo Montoya hits the ring to make a save but he's tossed back out. Savio Vega then hits the ring and makes a save. But at this point no one knows who he really is. Yeah Yep, Savio Vega's not been on TV yet, so this is essentially his debut. So Michael Hayes and McMahon on commentary, they sell it like it's a fan. The match itself, though, was an okay match, nothing special here. As a two-on-one, it was okay. After the match, we've got a backstage segment with Jerry Lawler pleading with President Jack Tunney to make his match with Bret Hart right now, looking to capitalise on that knee injury of Bret's. Next up, we've got a King of the Ring qualifying match with Mabel taking on Adam Bomb. Right at the start of the match, Mabel is sent outside. Adam Bomb hits a nice-looking slingshot splash. Mabel then gets the upper hand 
Mm. And picks up the win with a falling power slam. Apart from the fact that it was a King of the Ring qualifier, and they will point to the match. Following this backstage, we've got Todd Pettengill interviewing Razor Ramon and Savio Vega. Ramon gets over that him and Vega have history, once being opponents, but are now our friends. The next match is for the tag titles, with the challengers, the Smoking Guns, Billy and Bart Gunn, taking on the champions, Yokozuna and Owen Hart, who are accompanied by Jim Cornette. Before the match, Lawler is making his way down the aisle, trying to get his match with Brett to take place now. With a picture in picture, we see Brett backstage with an ice pack on his knee. Officials come out, stop Lawler. Yeah, it seems being royalty gets you everything apart from a match at the time and place of your choosing. <laughs> yeah. So the match itself, Smoking Guns do a lovely suplex on Owen, but as Billy has Owen hoisted up, Bart hits a drop kick to Owen's stomach. That was nice. I like the fact that the guns were doing more tag team moves. Yeah. So on outside, Yokozuna tries a splash on Billy into the ring post. Billy Gun moves and Yokozuna collides with the ring post. This has him pretty much lying dead on the outside for the remainder of the match. Back in the ring, the Smoking Guns hit a back suplex into a neck breaker on Owen. Yep. Bart goes for a cross body on Owen. Owen ducks out of the way. Bart collides with the ropes and rolls outside. Yeah. At this point, Jim Cornette gets up onto the apron, distracting Billy Gunn, who goes over, nails him one in the face. On the outside, Yokozuna has revived and lands a leg drop on Bart Gunn, rolls him back into the ring, and Owen covers. One, two, three, Yoko and Owen retain their titles. Yeah. Nothing special here, but any chance to see Owen is always a plus in my books. Yep. Todd Bettingale is backstage with Diesel. He says that he's 100% and he's coming for Sid. He calls himself the walrus for no apparent reason as well. Has he been listening to the Beatles for too long or something? <laughs> So Lawler is in the ring with his mum. His mum is actually a 20 something year old girl, <laughs> clearly not his mum. Cuts a promo saying that he's going to beat Bret Hart and once he's done that, his mum will beat up Bret Hart's mum. We cut back to Pettingale who's backstage with Bret. We find out that Bret has been bluffing all along and that his knee is fine. As Bret's walking down the ramp, he goes from faking a limp to walking normally. Once Lawler realises that Bret's knee injury has been a ruse, his face is a picture. Bret gets in the ring and immediately goes on the offence. Yeah, considering Lawler or up until that point has been all cocky he's yep. suddenly getting getting the pasting he deserves yeah so he's beating down on Lawler who eventually manages to counter a back body drop into a pile driver yep but instead of going straight for a cover or anything yep. and showing off yep and Brett just straight up yeah no no selling the, the pile driver yeah and from here on it's just more or less Brett's just in control the whole way Lawler's big talk is seemingly nothing right <laughs> now so with Brett in control Sinja runs interference comes down to the ring and gets up onto the apron. The referee takes a step out onto the apron leaving one foot in the ring and the rest of his body on the outside of the ring. Bret Hart Irish whips Lawler into the ropes. The referee tumbles outside trapping his foot in between the second and bottom rope with his body on the outside. Yeah that was actually quite clever. Bret still in control, hits the diving elbow from the second rope, goes for the pin but obviously the referee's on the outside. Hikushi hits the ring and lands a double axe handle from the top rope to the back of Bret as he's covering Lawler. He then goes up top and hits a diving headbutt. Lawler is holding Brett in place while Hakushi gets up to the top rope and hits another diving headbutt. Sinja frees the ref from the ropes. Yeah. Just in time for Lawler to roll up Brett. So with Lawler going over, this actually sets up the Kiss My Foot match at King of the Ring 95 which takes place the month after this show. Also after the match, mm -hmm. there is still a bit of a beatdown with Lawler and Hakushi. Mm -hmm. But once Brett actually gets back up, Lawler decides to get out of dodge. It's at this point where McMahon says, I've never seen Brett so angry. This you wait another couple of years to survive I'll see this and you'll see Brett pretty angry time has run out just like the last grain to the hourglass my friend time has run out for you your reign is over a new man will be crowned the champion you my friend Diesel you will become another one of my symbols. Another symbol of many victories that I will have. You will become a victim. Nothing you can do. No one to help you. Now, you have to meet the master. Oh, the world. 
excellent promo from Sid. Yeah, I thought it was really good. Pettengill and Stephanie do the draw for the free house. Some guy wins. Thank God this is the end of it. So next up's our main event. Sid the Challenger with DiBiase taking on the WWF champion Diesel. Two men brawl on the outside and Sid rams Diesel back first into the ring post. Because it's now Sid working on Diesel's back. When they're back in the ring, he's got him in the camel clutch. Yep, no chance of Diesel submitting. Sid lets go of the hold and he hits a big leg drop. With some nice hang time, I might add. Yeah, he does. But he can only get a two count. He goes straight back to the camel clutch. Diesel once again escapes this but gets choke slammed. It's quite a lame looking choke slam. I don't know if Sid's maybe not got the strength to lift Diesel or if Diesel doesn't jump high enough. I don't know. Maybe just because like the height he is, Diesel's not used to folk picking him up. So Sid lands the power bomb. He showboats and then eventually gets down and covers with the showboat and it telegraphs Diesel's going to be kicking out. Yeah. So after the kick out, Diesel goes through his moves of doom. <laughs> yeah. Snake eyes, the big boot, yep. and then leads up into the jackknife. Yep. So Tatanka, Sid's corporation stable mate, hits the ring and breaks up the pin. Tatanka, DiBiase and Sid all work over Diesel. Sid goes for another power bomb, but Diesel manages to backdrop himself free. Bam Bam Biglow helps Diesel clear the ring of the heels. Quite a short match for a main event. Yeah, first ever in your house and it ends with a BS finish. I'm not really a fan of title matches, especially where you've got run-ins like that, because I just yeah. feel like it takes away from the actual match. Not a very good match, especially for the main event. Not a fan. So that was the main event of the pay-per-view, but not the last match on the tape, as we get two Coliseum home video exclusives, which The Undertaker and Paul Bearer introduce. First of these exclusives is The Undertaker with Paul Bearer taking on Charles Wright in his in-between phase from Papa Shango and the Godfather, Kama with DiBiase. DiBiase has the melted down arm with him. Undertaker hits current school <laughs> as we kick off the match. Kama walks Taker over, rams him into the ring post on the outside a couple of times, gets a single leg Boston Crab. Undertaker begins to power out of it and Kama just lets it go. Yeah, it just seems to abandon it. But then we get a long bear hug spot, which again goes nowhere, taking every second they can to waste more time. So after a belly to belly, Taker takers up, i.e. no cells, hits a choke slam, followed by a tombstone for the victory. The Undertaker's win came out of nowhere as Kama was in control for the most part. Yeah. So it was an okay match. The second of the exclusives is Bam Bam taking on Tatanka, who is accompanied by DiBiase. DiBiase making his third appearance on the tape here. Is he getting paid by the appearance here or what? Is this how he gets his million dollar status? Tatanka hits a Simone drop on the outside to Bam Bam, which is Tatanka's finisher, but Bam Bam manages to get back in the ring before the 10 count. Bam Bam picks up the victory with a diving sunset flip from the top rope. This is a bit awkward looking. Bam Bam almost necked himself. <laughs> <laughs> Former tag partners facing off against one another didn't really have a lot of heat and it was an average match. Yeah. Okay, so overall, what did you make of the first ever In Your House pay-per-view? The house segment, when a house, felt very cheesy. I did like Bret Hart. Doing the two matches. Doing the two matches. I did like Kakushi's way of jumping to the top rope when he like he leaps up and yeah. gets on one knee. Yeah. Which looks good. And does the prayer build the diving headbutt. Yeah, that was good. So what parts of the pay-per-view did you like and what did you not like? So I liked the Bret Hart storyline leading into the show with him having two matches on the card. His match with Hakushi was for me match of the night and after the match he played in the angle of hurting his knee which later turned out to be a ruse just to lure Jerry Lawler into a false sense of security. Most of the matches were pretty poor and the main event itself wasn't that good. Also I didn't like Michael Hayes and Nick Mann on commentary. They're not a good duo. He just didn't have very much chemistry mm, on air I didn't I'd, think. I mean there's one comment that Hayes says to Vince who's so along the lines of you don't make the rules round here a wee and nod that was a bit funny overall a below average show so that's going to do it for this episode then thanks for listening see you later bye